Hello everyone, welcome to my question and answer video. This is part three. Um, I got cut off in part two, I'm sorry. Um, so I have to do part three. Uh, my camera only goes so far, so long. And that's why I make it in two parts, but I gotta do it in three now so I can answer everyone's questions. This might be kind of short, but thank you for tuning in. So, <clears throat> question from Chris, the United Kingdom. Hello Chris, how are you? When you talk about how much we give ourselves away, and how much we value what our abuser says, is this a response to our childhood? Because we did the same thing to our parents. Is this from neglect? Absolutely, absolutely. Our parents are teaching us things all the time. All the time, no matter what they're doing. They're, we're learning and they're teaching us, okay? So, all of us have had some degree of emotional neglect, and, and I know that not all of us are aware of this. We believe we had everything we needed, and typically, uh, if that's true, if we believe that, usually it's physical needs that we had, not so much emotional. Sometimes you, we need somebody else to point this out to us, but I promise you there's some degree of emotional neglect if you're in relationships where there's emotional abuse, okay? So, and I do say all the time, we give ourselves away too much to somebody, to this person, and, and we value their opinion too much. And so after the relationship... You know, we're so concerned about smear campaigns and what they think about us, what, what they're telling other people. Um, so in the relationship, we, we gave all of ourselves away. You know, uh, we tried to fix every problem. And, and as we know, we, it, it didn't matter if we fixed them, there was always new ones. They talked about their problems all the time and they were so emotional about it. And they focused on what they want and what they need and what they like all the time and said it all the time and never asked us so that we're always thinking about them, we're always investing in them uh, financially. Maybe they were investing in them financially and there's financial abuse, there usually is. Uh, we, you know, even if we're off doing our own thing, they're texting us all the time, we're thinking about them all the time. Uh, so we're giving them all our, our time, all our money, all our thoughts, all our feelings, they're all about them. You know, codependency is, we don't know where our feelings stop and their start. We're completely enmeshed as one person, there's no real autonomy in that relationship. Okay, so when it's over, we are so upset on what they think and what they're telling people, right? A couple years later, we don't care anymore, right? So it's right after that relationship is over. And this, this comes from neglect. It, it really is. Uh, we're always in the people that are in these relationships, emotionally abusive relationships. There's had to have been some emotional neglect in their childhood, and uh, it's really hard to see that. It's really hard to see our own lives a lot. We need people to point that out. It's much easier for someone else. It can be much easier for someone else to look at my life maybe than I can. Okay? And, and it's typical. Okay? Um, thanks. Good question, Chris. Viola from Sweden. Hello, Viola. Why did my ex change how he looks, not only when he met different people? <clears throat> and you said he changed his style, the shape of his face his body, and his height. And I was just curious how someone changes their height. You get his feet chopped off? and grow his hair out? I don't know. Uh, I'm not telling you anything, but I found that interesting. Maybe he slouches or stand, tries to stand taller and be taller than most. This is all low self-esteem. This is all shame. This is people that don't know who they are, don't have a very good self-perception, right? Look at children that dissociate a lot. Dissociating is, is a good, healthy defense mechanism against traumatic things we can't take and handle. So a child that can't handle something is so traumatic to them, they dissociate, they escape in their own brain, their own mind. And someone that does that a lot, I mean, there's even a disorder for that, uh, someone that does that a lot really, really has difficulties with their own self-perception and who they are, real, real sense of self. You know, you pack that in with shame and stuff like this. Uh, they believe they're bad people. They want to be accepted. So let me tell you something else real quick. It is ingrained in us to be accepted in society. Our brains care about two things, staying alive and procreating, but staying alive, number one. Our brains care about staying alive. They don't care about happiness. It doesn't. Stay alive. That's all that matters. I don't care if you're happy. Just stay alive. And we know through thousands of years of experience, we, uh, thousands of years of trying to stay alive without fangs and claws, 
you know, just being pretty, uh, just being what we have out against all these wild animals, big animals. One way we, well, the best way to stay alive is in numbers, society, you know, think, think about it. Literally, if there's big predators out there, if we stay in a group, we're, we're much better off. You know, one, if you're out of that group, out in the predators, it's imminent death. Uh, a punishment human beings use quite often throughout history is what? Sending them out the gates, right? To go be on your own. Good luck. Good luck with that. You can, you can look up and read many stories of people trying to do that on their own and going out in the wilderness all by themselves. And even the best survivalists, you can go do that for a while, but you need people. You need people, period. You, you can't, we can't live without people. It doesn't work. People die doing that. You know, the best survivalists go out in the woods and they die. And, and uh, it's not always just some accident, physical accident. Their emotions, they get so depressed, they almost don't want to live anymore. Um, so we need people. And uh, they, they want to be accepted. And they, don't, they have a real poor sense of who they are. And they feel like bad people. And so all these things, they take on other people's personalities. Um, I hope that makes sense. And I still want to know how you change your height. Thank you. Victoria from the United Kingdom. Hello, Victoria. Is the malignant narcissist more dangerous than the average person in relation to revenge under the above circumstances? What are they capable of? And you listed uh, uh, briefly your story. And um, basically, th this is a common question. And, and the reason is, is we find out the person that we thought we loved it is not at all the person we thought they were, okay? And, and we get bombarded with all this new information and we want to classify them as a narcissist and once we do, we think that they do everything that we hear about narcissists. And yes, these people can be kind of cookie cutters, you know, but they're different. We're talking about personalities. Not everyone's the same. Not every narcissist is the same. The best thing to do, guys, is, you know, I wouldn't know what your ex is capable of. I mean, humans are capable of anything, right? I mean, you know them better than me, okay? So, does this person have a track record of being violent, okay? Has he been arrested once or twice for being violent to his ex or another girl? Does he get in fights? Has he attacked people? Did he always threaten your life? Did he used to hit you? So, as far as violence is concerned, that should help you. If he never was and there's no track record and he didn't do it to you... I don't see why you would do it now, really. Our brains, after trauma, we're so scared, you know. So keep learning, Victoria. Keep feeling, keep feeling better and start understanding more. And this won't fear you, scare you so much. I bet in two years, four years, ten years, you won't be scared of this. It's because you're fresh out of this, right? So it's still traumatized a little bit, which is totally understandable. Um, what are they capable of? anything, right? What is he capable of? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But what's his track record, right? If he's never threatened you, I don't see why you'd do something. If he never put his hands on you, why would he now? Our brains are telling us, telling us this. Watch out for everything. Watch out for everybody, right? The depressed, traumatized brain will it, it, watch out for everything. Everything that's possible is going to happen. Every tree is going to fall on us. Lightning strikes, it's going to hit us. A car is swerving, it's going to hit us. You know, hey, you go down the list. So, and, and a depressed brain tells us, you know, that we deserve it and we're bad people. And we're never going to get better. So, th this is a reaction to trauma, you know. And if he wasn't ever violent, I don't see why he would be now. If he was violent... If he's been violent to you, you have every reason to be scared. Sure. I made a video on protecting yourself and feeling safer from, from things like this. Um, so that, that should be your real fear, right? I, I, don't, I don't think you have another fear besides violence. He, he can't emotionally hurt you unless you let him, you know? If, he's, if you don't let him back in your heart, in your home, you don't talk to him, he shouldn't keep emotionally hurting you. You don't, have, you don't need to be scared of that. So, like every emotion, examine it, explore it, find the reason. If, you know, you're scared, okay, what of? you got to do this. 
because just examining it and saying, what am I exactly afraid of? Forcing yourself to say, to say it, find out exactly what you're afraid of. You're afraid of him coming over and kicking your door in and shooting you, you know? Well, is that reasonable? Has he never been violent, doesn't have a record of this, doesn't own a gun, never been, you know, threatened you, never, you know what I mean? If, then that's probably not too practical, right? Um, if you're scared, document things. Document everything. I tell you guys all the time, if people have bad, negative, ugly, gross behavior towards you and stuff like this, don't wait for it to get worse. Start documenting it now. Contact a lawyer. Contact police. These people know and it, it, they're knowledgeable and experienced and they can usually help you feel better by telling you the truth, okay? So if we don't know what we're afraid of, it becomes a phobia. And, and this situation is extremely easy to become a phobia, isn't it? So know exactly what you're afraid of, okay? And is it reasonable? Well, if it is, do something about it. Well, it can you do something about it? If not, throw it out. Nothing you can do. If there's something you can do about it, let's start doing it. You know, it, women especially, and especially if you live alone, you know, there's things that you should do to your home and stuff and things you should know on how to stay a little safer. And, and, and that helps us feel safe. Being prepared for things is the answer, isn't it? So be prepared. And it's not like you're sitting there you know, waiting for it. It's just, well, I feel, I, I'm adding some safety and security to how I feel about something that may or may not happen, but at least if it does, I'm prepared, okay? Give it some time, Victoria. I'm guessing you won't worry about this in a long time from now because you, um, you, you'll feel better and understand and not so traumatized. Thank you for your question, Victoria. That is it. Um, part, end of the Q&A videos. Uh, please, if you guys could help the people that I'm trying to help give this information to by helping the information get out there. You know, support it, support my videos by voting and commenting, sharing it, posting it, things like this. The bigger this video gets, the bigger my channel gets, the more available the information is for people that are looking for help. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, adopt a dog. We're, uh, every country, I'm sure, are putting dogs, unwanted, emotionally neglected dogs to sleep every day. And we've been emotionally neglected and we're alone and we're isolated. And the two coming together will help both. Okay. Dogs help you from emotional abuse. All right. They raise oxytocin, helps you trust people, love people again. Okay. Thanks, guys. Love your soul first. I'll see you next Monday.